Hello, welcome to Tennessee's at home learning series for math. Today's lesson is for all our seventh graders out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the 18th in our series. My name is Kayla Anderson, and I'm an eighth grade math teacher at Rocky Fork Middle School in the Rutherford County School District. Welcome to my virtual classroom. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. If you haven't seen any of our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov education. That's also where you can find the optional student packet, which has materials from today's lesson. If you haven't seen any of our previous lessons, you're welcome to join in today, but it may be more fun if you first go back and watch the previous lessons since we'll be discussing material we've already talked about. Before we begin today's lesson, to participate fully, you will need paper, pencil, a surface to write on, and you may want the optional student packet. Okay, let's begin. In your previous classes, you may have learned what area of an object is. Can you describe area to me in your own words? Sometimes students have misconceptions about perimeter and area. Perimeter is like a fence around your yard and it's the total distance it would take to walk the length of the fence. Area is the amount of space that is inside of the fence. A more formal definition of area could be a measure of how much space there is on a flat surface. In your previous classes, you have likely learned the formulas for area of a triangle, square, rectangle, parallelogram, and trapezoid. If you haven't, or you don't remember the formulas, it's okay. We are going to review them before we continue on with the lesson. Let's go ahead and do that now. Create a two column chart like mine on your paper, please. I'll pause for you to do that. While you're creating your chart, if you remember any of the area formulas for these shapes, go ahead and write them in the chart. I'll give you a few moments to write down the ones you remember and create the chart. Did you get some or all of the formulas? Compare your formulas to mine as I write them in the chart. These will be very important as we move forward today. So starting with our triangle, the formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half B H. Now what does the B stand for in this formula? B stands for base. How about the H? H stands for height. So the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. How about the formula for the area of a square? Oh, well, the formula for the area of a square is A equals S squared. S stands for side. So it's the side squared or the side times itself. How about the formula for the area of a rectangle? Formula for the area of a rectangle is A equals L W. That is an L. If it's confusing to you and looks like a one, you could always make it a cursive L to distinguish that. So that L stands for length and the W stands for width. How about the formula for the area of a parallelogram? Formula for the area of a parallelogram is A equals B H. And just like in our triangle, that's base for B and height for H. The last one is the formula for the area of a circle. 
I hope that you remembered that formula from our previous lessons. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. And remember that oftentimes we use 3.14 or 3 and 14 hundredths as an approximation of pi. R stands for radius, and squared means that radius times itself. This chart is going to be very helpful as we solve for areas of composite figures today. Before we start looking at some examples, let's explore what composite figures are. A composite figure is made up of simple geometric shapes such as squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, circles, and trapezoids. To find the area of a composite figure or other irregular shaped figures, divide them into simple, non-overlapping figures. Find the area of each simpler figure and then add the areas together to find the total area of the composite figure. All right, so we're going to look at some examples of some composite figures and find the areas. So here is our first example. Find the area of each figure. Use 3 and 14 hundredths for pi. Well, first let's figure out how many shapes are in our composite figure. How many simple shapes do you see? I see three different simple shapes. There's the top triangle right here, the middle rectangle, and then there's the bottom triangle. We'll focus on the top triangle area first. What is the area formula for a triangle? Right, A equals one half B H, or one half base times height. Okay, so what's the base of the top triangle? Right, the base here is three. The base is three because the triangle is sitting on this three here. Okay, so what's the height of this triangle? Right, it is two um, because that's how tall this triangle is. So H or the height is two. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and solve for the area of the top triangle by simplifying this. Um, remember that with addition, or excuse me, with multiplication, you can multiply um, easier numbers together first if needed. So three times two gives me six, and six times one half gives me three. So the area, of that top triangle is three square feet. Great work. Okay, so let's move to finding the area for the middle rectangle. Remember that's right here. Okay, so what's the area formula for a rectangle? Let me label this. What is it? Right, it is area equals length times width. Okay, so what is the length of this rectangle here? So the length is 11 feet because we have the eight feet here plus the three feet here. So the length of this rectangle is 11 feet. How about the width? What's the width? Right, the width of this rectangle is the four feet. Okay, so now that we have the length and the width, we're gonna solve for the area of this rectangle. So Simplifying by multiplying these, 11 times 4 is 44. So the area of the rectangle is 44 square feet. Great. So now we have to find the area of this bottom triangle here. So while I'm writing this, what's the formula for the area of a triangle again? Right, we've already used it up here. It's A equals 1 half B H, or area equals one half times the base times the height. So what is the base of this triangle? Yep, it's that three feet again, just like with the top triangle. What's the height? Right, the height is also three. So let's go ahead and substitute those numbers into our formula. So one half base was three, height was three, 
And now we're going to simplify this. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 half times 9 is 4 and a half, or 4 and 5 tenths. So the area of that bottom uh, triangle is 4 and a half square feet. So our last step of this problem is going to be to add the areas of the three simple shapes together. Recall that those areas were 3 square feet, 44 square feet, and 4 and 5 tenths, or 4 and a half square feet. So we're going to add together the 3 plus the 44 plus the 4 and a half. And what do you get when you add all of those together? Right. You get 51 and a half square feet. Okay, great work. So the, the area of this composite figure, 51 and a half square feet. Good job. So the next one is a little bit different. Here's what it looks like. A banquet room is being carpeted. A floor plan of the room is shown at the right. Actually, it's shown below, sorry. Each unit represents one yard. The carpet costs $23.50 per square yard. How much will it cost to carpet the room? Well, let's start the problem by figuring out how many simple shapes make up this composite figure. How many simple shapes do you see? Right, I see three of them as well. I see a parallelogram on the left, a rectangle in the middle, and a small triangle to the bottom right. This time, let's create a chart to help organize our work. Here's a chart that I believe will help us. Go ahead and copy this down. While you're copying that down, in this next row below the name of the shape, uh, put the area formulas for each of the shapes in the chart. And remember that we filled those into our larger chart at the beginning of this. So go ahead and fill in those area formulas. So the area of a parallelogram is base times height, of a rectangle is length times width, and of a triangle is one half times base times height. Next, we need to find the various side lengths and heights of our various shapes. Since they're not given to us, we will have to use the grid in order to count them. Can you count the number or grids there are to represent the base of the parallelogram? Let's go back up here to our parallelogram. So counting the, the grid units, we have one, two, three, four as the base of the parallelogram. So four yards is the length of the base. Then we're going to calculate the height of the parallelogram. Can you please count to determine the height? All right, so the height is one, two. So now we're going to use our table to continue solving for the area of the parallelogram. So we just counted, sorry, and said that the base was four yards and that the height was two yards. So multiplying those together, the area of the parallelogram is going to be eight square yards. Great. Now let's calculate the length and width of the rectangle. So here it is again. There's our rectangle. We need to count. So one, two, three, four, five, six as the length of our rectangle, six yards. And then how about the width? Right. One, two, three, four yards as the width. So using our chart, we're going to continue solving the rectangle or solving for the area of the rectangle. So A or area equals length, which was six yards times width, which was four yards to give us an area of 24 square yards for the rectangle. Great. The last simple shape that we have to calculate is the triangle. So here's our triangle. Can you please count um, to find the height and the base, the length of the height and the length of the base for this triangle? You can record those in your chart once you've found them. Okay, so the height 
is two. One, two. The base is one. So to finish out our chart, area equals one half times the base, which was um, one yard, times the height, which was two yards. Okay. And then finishing this, two times one is two, and one half of two is one. So the area of the triangle is one square yard. Let me put that where you can see the whole chart. So now that we've solved for all of the simple shapes in the figure, we need to figure out the total area of the figure. How are we going to do that? Yep, we're going to take the area of these three simpler shapes, 8, 24, and 1. And we're going to add them together to get what? Right, 33 square yards. So the area of the entire composite figure, 33 square yards. Now, the problem says that if the carpet costs $23.50 per square yard, um, then we want to know how much it's going to cost to carpet the entire room. Well, we calculated that the area is 33 square yards. So how are we going to figure out how much it would cost to carpet that entire place? Yep, we're going to need to take this 33, which is the total area. And we're going to need to multiply times the cost per square yard. Okay, and so multiplying those together, we get $775.50. So to carpet the entire banquet room, it would cost $775.50. Great job, guys. So you've been doing a great job helping me through this. I appreciate it. We're going to look at another problem. So here's our next problem. Okay, we want to find the area of the figure. We want to use 3 and 14 hundredths for pi. So just like we've been doing, let's figure out how many simple shapes are in our composite figure. So how many simple shapes do you see here? Yeah, I see two. Uh, the two simple shapes are this square right here and then a half of a circle on the end here. So now we have to calculate the areas of those two shapes. So for our square, what's the formula for the area of a square? Yep, side squared. So what is one of the side lengths of this square here? Yep, 10 meters. So if our side length is 10 meters, we're going to substitute 10 in place of S, and then we're going to square it, which means we're going to multiply that number times itself. So the area here, 10 times 10, or 10 squared is 100 square meters. Great. So now we have to find the area of the half circle. So let's start out with what's the formula for the area of a circle? Mm -hmm. Area equals pi times the radius squared. So what is the um, what is the radius of our circle? Okay, so remember that a radius is from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So we can count these boxes here. So one, two, three, four. Five. So we know that our radius is 5. So let's just go ahead and find the entire area of one whole circle, and then we'll deal with the fact that it's a half of a circle after we've done that. So our radius is 5. We're going to square that. Remember that 5 squared is 25, so we've got pi times 25 here. And then the problem told us to use 3 and 14 hundredths in place of pi. So we're going to multiply 3 and 14 hundredths times 25 to get an area for the entire circle of 78 and 5 tenths square meters. Now, we're not actually done with this one because, like I just mentioned, this 78 and 5 tenths is the area of the entire circle. However, we only have half of the circle here. So what are we going to need to do in order to calculate the area that's just here for this half circle? 
right? So we're going to need to either divide by two or multiply by one half, um, whatever you are more comfortable with. So 78 and 5 tenths divided by two gives us 39 and 25 hundredths square meters. So the area of the half circle, 39 and 25 hundredths. Okay, so now that we have the area of the square and the area of the half circle, to find the area of the total composite figure, we need to add the 100 square meters plus the 39 and 25 hundredths square meters to get 139 and 25 hundredths square meters as the area of the composite figure. Great, so here is another one for us to try. Erin wants to carpet the floor of her closet. The floor plan of the closet is shown. What is the area of her closet? So again, the first thing that we need to do is figure out how many simple shapes are in this composite figure. I see two of them. I see a rectangle and a triangle. Okay, so now that we know that, we know we need the formula for the area of the rectangle. We can start there. Formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we need the length and the width of the rectangle. Uh, go ahead and substitute those in your formula in the appropriate places. Okay, so from our drawing, we can see that the length of the rectangle is 10 feet, that the width of the rectangle is four feet. So to get the area of that rectangle, we're gonna multiply 10 times four to get 40 square feet for the area of the rectangle. Okay, now we need the area of the triangle. What is the formula for the area of a triangle? Go ahead and write it on your paper. One half, base times height. Now that we have that, go ahead and substitute the appropriate um, lengths there. Okay, so the base is the six feet here. How about the height of the triangle? Well, the height is the three feet here plus the four feet here. So the height of our triangle is actually seven feet. So doing some multiplication here, six times seven is 42 and half of 42 is 21. So the area of that triangle is 21 square feet. The last step to calculate the full area is going to be, yep, adding the 40 square feet of the rectangle plus 21 square feet of the triangle to get 61 square feet as the total area um, in the floor of Aaron's closet. All right, you're going to try the next one. So here it is. Alex is making 12 pennants for the school fair. The pattern he is using to make the pennants is shown in the figure. The fabric of the pennants cost $1.25 per square foot. How much will it cost Alex to make 12 pennants? So I'm going to get you started and then you're going to be working on this one. So remember, you need to know how many simple shapes make up the composite figure. You need to know what they are. You'll want to write down the formulas that you need and substitute the appropriate numbers to calculate the area. Then keep in mind that there are 12 pennants and that it cost $1.25 per square foot for the fabric. So I'll pause for a second while you get started. As you're working, I'm going to go ahead and do some work on my paper, and then we will talk about this together.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and start explaining, and then we can finish the problem together. So I hope you saw that there was a rectangle here. The formula is length times width. The length was 1. The width was 3. Multiplying them, I figured out that the area of the rectangle is 3 square feet. Hope you also saw a triangle. I wrote the area for the formula of a triangle, substituted 1 for the base and 1 for the height, to find that the area of the triangle is 1 half square feet. That means that the total area of this figure is three and a half square feet. Now, Alex is making 12 pennants, and so if every pennant is three and a half square feet, I'm going to multiply by 12 to figure out that there are 42 square feet in all 12 of those pennants. Okay. The problem is asking how much it's going to cost Alex to make these pennants if the fabric is $1.25 per square foot. So I'm going to need to multiply the 42 square feet times the $1.25 per square foot for a total cost of $52.50. So if Alex is going to make 12 of these pennants, it would cost $52.50 for the fabric um, to make those pennants. Great job, guys. Great work today, seventh grade. Remember that today we worked on using different strategies in order to solve for composite figures. You really did a great job. After the video is over, you will have some problems to practice on your own. I'm showing you those practice problems now, or you can find them in the student practice for this lesson at the website, which is www.tn.gov education. Good luck and do your best. All right, seventh grade, I enjoyed reviewing finding the area of composite figures with you today. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. I look forward to seeing you for our next lesson in Tennessee's at-home learning series. Bye.